All right, now occasionally, let me clear the screen. Occasionally, you are going to be interested in extracting more than one element. Like this is a large matrix of data. Maybe you're interested in, in, in pulling out the three, the negative two, the five, and the four as a matrix. Because maybe you'd like to pull this out of your original data matrix and then operate only on that. Like you might imagine this is some, some data that represents, you know, some survey you took on the telephone and you know, there could be a reason why you arranged it in terms of a matrix, but you, you took that data and then you grab it, you pull it all into MATLAB, and then when you get it into MATLAB, you realize you really only want to operate on, on these four elements here. So what you want to do is you want to extract them out of this matrix so that you can then do operations only on that subset of data. Now obviously you could, this is simple, so you could just type this stuff into a new matrix, right? But you don't want to do that. You, what if your matrix is 100 elements? 100 columns by 100 rows and you want to extract 25 rows and 25 columns. So you don't, you don't want to type that stuff in. You want to be able to do it automatically, right? So the way you do it, remember um, in terms of vectors, you know, when we did, let me show you real quick, test vector. This is the vector we're using as a test. When you want to extract a range, you just go 2 comma 5 or something like that, or 2 colon 5. The colon means um, a range basically is what it means. So elements two, three, four, and five. And when you hit enter here, then it basically pulls that all back to you here. So let me pull that back. There's test matrix. So the way you do it here is if I want to extract, you know, these four central uh, elements there, then I need to tell it, I need to tell it um, rows two through three. That's what that's what that means, rows, uh, rows two through three, this is rows two and three, comma, columns two through three. So remember, everything when you, when you extract elements from a matrix is rows, comma, columns. So this is the rows, this is the columns. The colons tell it, um, you know, rows two to three, that's the, these guys, the columns tell it columns two to three. So when I hit enter, I should have extracted everything in the center, and in fact, you know, this is, you can see the way it's arranged. It looks like a, a sub matrix and it actually is. Um, I could say sub matrix equals test matrix parentheses two comma or two colon three comma two colon three colon like this. So I basically I extract those elements and I set it equal to a new vector, a new matrix that I have. So now I have something called sub matrix created and I can go and do all kinds of analysis on sub matrix and this is a full-blown matrix I've, ex I've assigned those elements to this so if I want you know the second element there I can do two comma two second row second column I should get that four back and there you go so you see anytime you see a spacing like this you know it's it's in matrix format and you can extract elements out of that so let me pull up test matrix one more time and give you another example because it's really important that you understand how to extract elements from a matrix. So originally we were wanting to extract these central four. Let's say I want to extract this row, this row, and this row, like these kind of like this, this lower right hand quadrant. I want all of that data right there. Okay. So the way I want to do it is I want rows and columns. So in terms of rows, I want rows two through uh, four and I want columns two through four, right? So I want rows two through four, columns two through four, okay? And I have received back everything that I wanted. This sub matrix of data down here uh, is what was returned to me. And of course I could assign that to a new variable and I could manipulate it. I could do all kinds of calculations with the sub matrix. Right now we're just teaching you how to extract data um, using the, the MATLAB syntax, which is what we have here. Um, if I change it, so it's uh, instead of 2 to 4, 2 to 3, then we get a smaller matrix back. This is uh, looking at the original test matrix. This is rows 2 through 4. So this is rows 2, 3, and 4. But for columns, it's only columns 2 and 3. So this is columns 2 and 3, 2 and 3, 2 and 3. And that's what's returned to us there. So you have a lot of power in terms of what you can extract uh, there. Now, at this point, we've learned how to enter matrices and create them. We've learned how to extract elements from them, some of the most important things that we have. Now, I want to show you an alternate way to basically create a matrix if you, if you have the need. Let's say you, have, you would like to create a matrix, uh, and you know you can type it all in, but for whatever reason you don't want to type it in. Maybe it's a lot of numbers. 
maybe you don't want to, you know, maybe you don't want to open up a bracket and just, you know, start typing in a bunch of stuff here. Maybe that's cumbersome to you for whatever reason for the matrix that you have. What you could do, um, I could I could make a variable called, let's say, another matrix. Let me make it easier to read. Another matrix. I could just set it equal to anything I want. And if I look over here, another matrix is a variable that's created as a value of one. Everything else here is a matrix. You can see the values here, and you can sort of tell at a glance that these are all matrices or vectors, right? But uh, this thing I created called another matrix just as a value of one. So it's just a variable. But um, if I double click this guy, then it's going to open up this editor that I showed you briefly. It's called the variable editor. I showed you briefly uh, several sections ago that you had this sort of spreadsheet built into MATLAB. So it has a value of one here. And before we do anything, I'll just let you open up a uh, test matrix, right? We'll open this guy up. You can see the, the matrix that, that we've been using in there. So the value of the matrix, whatever the current value is, is what is stored there. And you can see there, you can move around with the arrow keys. You can go highlight everything. And you can actually make changes in here as well. But if you just create this guy, just any variable, and you double click on it, it'll have the single value. Now, if you want to make this into a matrix, I can type a five here. I can go over and type a six there. You know, I can make this a negative 17. You know, I can do whatever I want. And then I can just, you know, it tries to pre-fill in whatever it thinks the dimensions of the thing is going to be. So I have a matrix here, 10, 0, let's do it, 10, 0, 1, 0, something like that. So here's a matrix I have an input here, and whenever I close this guy off with this little arrow here, that is the new value. Now another matrix is not just a value, it's, it says three by four double, that means it's three rows and, and uh, basically four columns. So now if I type in another matrix and hit enter, this is what's in there. So I guess the bottom line is you have two ways of, of entering matrices in the, the recent versions of MATLAB. The first one would be to do it the way we did it before. You would you would um, basically say, you know, uh, JSON is equal to, and you open this guy up and you enter your first row like this, and you put a semicolon, and you enter your second row, and you hit another semicolon, and then you hit enter your third row like that. That is a way to enter a matrix, and that works fine. But if you want, you can create a little variable. You can go over here. Uh, and so in this case we just created JSON. You can double click it and you can enter the values and if you decide, oh I want to add another row for some reason, I forgot to do that. Then I can put this guy here in negative one or whatever and then whenever I go back everything is changed. Okay, so everything's updated. When would that be useful? Well, for small, small matrices, you know, I really don't encourage you to do this. I encourage you to type it into the MATLAB command window just because it gives you practice with the MATLAB syntax. But if you're entering data directly and manually in and you don't have any other way to do it, what if you have a lot of scientific notation? What if you have, you know, very large numbers or very small numbers? Well, like a lots of decimals, you know, 0 .0010 or something. That's cumbersome just to type out in one long line on the command line. It can get cumbersome. So it might be make a little more sense for you just to come into the variable editor here and just type it all in. But either way, once the, once the matrix is created, then you can use it the same way as any other guy. Okay, let me just show you one final thing before we close this guy off. Um, matrices in MATLAB are not afraid of any special numbers. So I can do um, complex matrix, right? I can type, you know, real numbers in here. 1 space 2 space, you know, 3 space negative 1. Okay, put a semicolon. For my next line, I can type in, of course, decimals. 0 0.5 space 0 0.25 space uh, 3 slash 4. That's going to be evaluated as 0.75, right? And I can even put things like, like pi in here. You know, things that are defined in terms of MATLAB. Uh, constants. So that's my second row. It's got four elements. My third row, I can do all kinds of other things. I can do three space four. I can do imaginary numbers. I can just put i here. MATLAB knows that i is is the imaginary number i. That's my third element. My fourth element, I could put three, you know, plus two i, right? Because we we know how to deal with complex numbers, and I can close that off. So my first row is going to be these four regular old numbers. My second row is going to be these numbers. Two, one of them is a fraction, the other one is a pi, but when MATLAB does it, it's going to evaluate this fraction as a decimal. And then the fourth one is going to be number, number, 
imaginary number i, and the fourth one's going to be complex number 3 plus 2i. Let's see what it looks like. And there you go. This is a good example of when, you, when you're doing things and you get an error, you got to look at it and see what did you do wrong. Well, in this case, I just typed in complex matrix and I opened the bracket. I'm going to pull that guy back and go here, and I forgot to put an equal sign there. So I'm using, I'm setting this variable equal to this matrix. So let's try it again. And there is our matrix in all of its glory. The first row are just these numbers. The second row, notice our fraction three quarters was converted to a decimal. MATLAB's always going to do that unless you tell it that you're dealing with a symbol. We did not do that here. Um, and a pi, of course, was not kept exact. Pi is 3.14, and it kind of truncates it. And the fourth row, uh, we have these numbers. i is 0 plus 1i. That's exactly what you would expect. And then 3 plus 2i. So you can put complex numbers in here. You can put regular decimals. You can put constants. It doesn't matter. If you start dealing with this guy and it has complex numbers in it, MATLAB is going to be able to handle it just fine. So put whatever you need to put in there. And if we double click on complex matrix, you'll see everything in its full glory. So MATLAB shows you everything, the complex representation of everything. So this is 1 plus 0i. It, it's a real number. So it's just showing you everything there. But all the information is in the variable editor in there as you also see on the screen. And if you want to extract um, complex matrix, let's say you want to extract this last guy. This is the third row, um, fourth column. Then you get 3 plus 2i, which is this guy, third row, fourth column. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Make sure you know how to enter matrices into MATLAB. Make sure you know how to extract elements from those matrices. Practice with this, and it's very important, actually, because as we go through, you know, we're going to be creating matrices constantly, dealing with calculations and extracting answers and things, and so you need to make sure you understand how to do it. So practice it. Uh, do these exercises yourself, and make sure you totally understand how to deal with inputting matrices in MATLAB.